Good evening, everyone. I want to talk about uh, the great things that come with walls. Are walls a good thing? Are they positive? Are they a negative? And are they biblical? So, with this particular broadcast, we're going to talk about that. Hello everyone. All right. Let's get this going. So I wanted to talk about this because Trump had brought it up again that there is a humanitarian crisis on the border, which is true. People are overrunning the border and trying to overwhelm our resources in our southern states along the Mexican border. And then they're trying to migrate to wherever, be it California, Washington, Oregon, uh, the Midwest, wherever they can find to utilize our resources. Sanctuary cities are their preferred place to go. So let's talk a little bit about China. China did their Great Wall, which was intended to deal with the impending invasions that they thought might be a big deal during the Ming Dynasty. If you look, I borrowed from the historyextra.com the Great Wall of China is an ancient series of walls and fortifications located in northern China, built around 500 years ago. Now, keep that in mind, that wall has been built by the various dynasties over the years. Estimates that its length vary from 1,500 to 5,000 miles. An archaeological survey carried out in 2012 by China's State Administration of Cultural Heritage suggested the wall is more than double that length, some 13,000 miles, or 21,000 kilometers long. There's kind of a picture of the wall on this page if you want to check that out. It's a very impressive wall very awesome from sp some spots having guard towers to other spots just being a slight rise in the landscape so that is china's great well hey debbie good to see you i'm going to do a little bit more and we'll see how this goes all right venezuela built a wall when socialism really started to take hold. As of August 2015, they had closed their border with Colombia under the pretext of combating smugglers. Well, with that, and this is out of the fee.org article, Venezuela built a wall. They closed their border thinking that they would prevent their goods from being sold and poached back in Colombia. So essentially they put Colombia as a scapegoat as foreign actors to shift their policies and close down their border. So China used theirs in a positive way. Venezuela, on the other hand, has lost 2 million Venezuelans since Chavez took power back in 1999. These people have taken off to Colombia, Panama, Spain, the U.S., all because 
our economic freedom in America is way better than socialist countries. Venezuela is essentially a socialist nightmare at this point. Here's where I found it. It's under the Freedom for Economic Education website. So, with that, let's see what the biblical mandate was in Nehemiah. So I'll show you that page here momentarily. Let's just hold on it for a second. All right, let's pull that up. All right, the rebuilding of the wall in Jerusalem by Jeremiah. So, Jeremiah was mandated by God to return to the ruins after Jerusalem had been sacked and the walls were destroyed. The difference with the biblical mandate was it was the temple and the wall coexisted with each other. The temple seemed to be a religious institution, but the walls were a secular one. And yet God led Nehemiah to work on the walls and Ezra to work on reparations to the temple. So at that point, both the sacred and the secular were necessary to fulfill God's plan to restore the nation of Israel. This is on theologyofwork.org. So the work was, was of a single piece. The reason was easy to understand. And this is why in America, I believe the same standard applies. Without a wall, no city in the ancient Near East was safe from bandits, gangs, wild animals, even though the empire was at peace. That's a direct quote from the Theology of Work project. The more economically and culturally developed the city was, the greater the value of the things in the city and the greater the need for the wall. There's some very similar differences there between Jerusalem and America. The temple, on the other hand, had its rich decorations, which would have been particular at risk due to raiders, foreign invaders. So, with that, their mandate was no wall meant no city, and no city meant no temple. Well, in America, the same thing applies. Without walls, America is no longer safe. And without a safe America, with this also applies to borderless countries. It allows both the positive and the negative to free flow between the two countries, which at that point, you don't know who you're going to get. You don't know if you're going to get the positive or is it going to be the negative. Hey, Andrew, Debbie, I'm glad you're here. So with that, you guys, walls are a very positive thing. They can encourage people to obey the laws of your country. If you're Venezuela, though, you can keep your citizens in, which means economically their freedom is lost. If you're China, which was a great idea at the time, but when it all worked out, their wall actually served no purpose. It's still an archaeological, fantastic, amazing engineering feat. They, they nailed it when they built the wall with it being 
a tourist attraction. It did not, did not prevent foreign invaders. With our wall, what is our purpose? Is it for positive or is it negative? Or is there another option? Is there a biblical mandate to protect the citizens of America? Or is the future of America to be a borderless country that has free-flowing trade? and free-flowing commerce and people? Debbie, it's a really good question because it depends on who the ruling class is at the time. If they're very conservative, that wall could be to protect the people of the country. If they're very liberal and of a socialist stance, it could be to keep the people in, such as Venezuela. So it depends on who is in power at the time. The same thing applies to the military, the same thing applies to walls along borders. Look at our leaders, our former presidents, all have walls around their residences as well as many senators, congressmen, governors. It just depends on what the purpose of the wall is. Go ahead, Debbie, I'll answer your question. <clears throat> While you're thinking about that, you know, take a drink. Well, Debbie, the reality there is, is Trump for us or against us? I honestly can't answer that. I, I don't know. Currently, the way he's playing things, it could be a very positive thing. But what we don't know is... Should we change to a more liberal bent leader in Congress? There's nothing saying what that wall is going to be intended for. I would like to think that it's strictly for protection. Not, as Alex Jones would say, meant to keep us in which you could say that you could paint it either way. It could be to keep them out or to keep us in. Debbie, it's wise to question everything. It's good to question our leaders. It's good to exercise our rights to contact our representatives and ask their intentions of the legislation that they're putting forth. And at that point, the minute you can no longer communicate with the elite, with people that have all the money, with your political leaders, at that point, we do need to ask those kinds of questions. Until then, I'm not worried about it. For the meantime, the wall could stem the flow of drugs, could stem the flow of illegal workers, illegal settlers, and prevent those that 
are meant to harm us. Andrew brought up a really good point. The Canadian border would need to be built up as well if they're going to prevent movement between Canada and the States if they were going to restrict our movements just to this area. That hasn't happened. Now, if you watched the video that Dom posted called Endgame, they would prefer that we are restricted to North America, where you would be free-flowing to travel between Canada, the U.S., and Mexico. Now, that I can't say for sure what that could be. That is plausible at this point. There's no telling how long that could be before something like that was implemented. Yes, Mexico is part of North America, Andrew. So if they want to make a North American region, then that's what they would go for. There's the key, Andrew and Debbie. When it comes to tools, it depends who is wielding the tool. It can be utilized for good, or it could be utilized for evil purposes. Because the other question you got to ask yourself, Debbie, which is good, is if they built a wall all the way around America, and then they seized all the firearms from all the Americans, we would be Venezuela at the point which there would not be a North American region. So that's what I'm saying. It just depends on who is in power and what it's being used for. And Andrew, you're right. Borders will be enforced. And hopefully the intent is to go back to our Ellis Island model where you pass through immigration when it's your turn. Right now, we we continue to grant green cards and make citizens. They do the swearing in ceremonies all the time. So we're still making citizens. It's not something that we're not doing. We're doing that. The thing is, their countries have gotten so bad that they don't want to return to the crazy. But what we don't want is for them to bring the crazy to us because that's the downfall of Californians moving to various states and saying, hey, we need laws like where we came from. And then they petition their representatives to bring the same kind of laws that have destroyed California. That needs to stop. Yes, Debbie, we're all immigrants. And you could be considered a minor immigrant, per se, if you move from the East Coast to the West Coast, or vice versa. You still have to acclimate to the state that you're moving to. You still have to abide by the laws of the state that you're moving to. You still have to get a driver's license from the state that you move to. Change your voter registration. All those things 
we do as Americans. With the sanctuary city issues, people aren't doing that. They're not following the rules. They're not learning English. They're not abiding by the intent of the Constitution. And that yet, they want to be heard in our courts. They don't want to register to vote. They don't want to register for selective service in case they were drafted. They don't want to abide by our laws. Yeah, most Irish and Italian, they, they didn't like each other, but... Yeah, notice, Andrew, there was a whole lot of mixing going on. Because you, at, during those days, you got with who was available. People weren't nearly as choosy. You, you had to deal with what was available. And it still applies today. I mean, look at what China's done, where they've only allowed one child for... A significant length of time which means there are not that many females for their men to marry which has kind of bitten them with not enough of their men in order for their men to hook up with women grow families so their populations on a downhill slide the same thing is applying in other countries. The quest for borderless countries in Europe is not turning as well out as well as they were hoping. They were hoping it would be peace and love and like the 60s in San Francisco, that everybody would just be kumbaya and get along with each other. That hasn't happened. They are not interacting well with each other. Sweden is in crisis. Germany is in crisis. And Germany, it wasn't but 60-something years ago that they had the wall dividing East and West Germany when that thing was put up in the 50s. So they know what walls do. But many of their children have no clue what the purpose of that wall was. That was a wall of negative and evil purposes. So that's another example, like Venezuela, where walls have negative purposes, but in the book of Nehemiah, in the Bible, walls had a very positive purpose to protect those people that were following the law and it was protecting the temple and the goods and services of Jerusalem. So, with that, we need to be diligent about monitoring who's crossing our borders. We just can't take it at face value that, oh, everybody's perfectly safe and fine and it's all going to work out. Because that's not true. We know how that works. That if you don't lock the door to your house, you don't know what kind of riffraff is coming through the door. So, guys, exercise your Second Amendment rights. Make sure that you're fully trained. 
fully armed, have adequate ammunition, have adequate repetition. Make sure that you can conceal carry safely and effectively. Make sure that we're exercising our First Amendment rights. Because without the second, the first doesn't mean a whole lot. First Amendment, our rights to freedom of assembly, freedom of religion, not from religion, as Obama continued to bang the drum during his administration. Also, make sure that we're minding our ability to petition our leaders, both city council as well as your county representatives, your local representatives, your local senators, your governor, your secretary, your attorney general. If your attorney general is not upholding the laws of your state, you need to find out why. So, I'm glad I was able to talk to you guys about the significance of the Great Wall of China, why Venezuela built a wall, and the impact it's having on their people, the starvation, the lack of commerce, the loss of all their wisdom and highly educated civilian population, as well as talking to you about the significance that Nehemiah had in rebuilding the wall in Jerusalem to preserve the temple. that Ezra was rebuilding. <coughs> so, you guys have a great night. I put uh, others down in the description that you need to patronize. Check out their streams. Check out Steve Pender, as well as Phil the Bears, and Dom, and feel free if you drop want to drop something in the bucket on my PayPal and follow me on Twitter. Thanks, guys, and have a great night.